Good morning, and welcome to our weekly Bible study for Wednesday, January 6th, uh, here in 2021, the first Bible study for this year. Uh, today is the day designated in the church as the celebration of the Epiphany of our Lord. And so you'll see uh, I have some uh, visitors, uh, more or less, behind me here, um, known as the Magi, the Wise Men, the um, the three kings, as we uh, hear in our hymn, we're going to talk a little bit about them today, uh, since the uh, gospel for Epiphany uh, centers on the visit of the Magi to Jesus. Uh, this coming Sunday, our uh, focus will be on the baptism of Jesus as we celebrate the baptism of our Lord. Uh, but for today, since this is the day of Epiphany, I thought it'd be fitting and we do have uh, a lot of uh, informative and hopefully some uh, interesting things to talk about today. So, um, again, this is Epiphany. We celebrate this day. Uh, we'll talk about that as we move on uh, and uh, discuss the role of the wise men, the magi, the three kings in our celebration of Epiphany. Before we do that, though, I do have on a very important announcement uh, this comes from our COVID-19 task force. Uh, if you have checked your email already this morning, you may already have gotten this notice. Um, but I will simply read to you uh, the notice that went out via email and will be posted on our website and other places um, concerning our uh, upcoming uh, Sunday worship services. Um, at its most recent meeting on January 5th, 2021, St. Mark's COVID-19 Task Force reached the difficult decision to continue with remote-only worship. This decision is effective until the task force's next meeting on January 26th, at which time a decision as to the future will be made based on the situation at that time. Worship services, as well as Wednesday Bible study, will continue to be recorded and sent via email, Facebook, YouTube, and St. Mark's website, stmarksharrisburg.org. While the state has eased restrictions and a vaccine is being made available in some places, the task force believes the high number of new cases, hospitalizations, and deaths from coronavirus being reported make it in the best interest of our congregation that we do not gather for worship until we see a significant improvement in the situation. For some time, most of us were able to say that we did not personally know anyone who had been infected with COVID-19, but more recently, it seems many of us have family members, friends, or others in our close social circle that have had positive coronavirus test results with varying degrees of symptoms. We greatly appreciate your patience with this situation and your faithful dedication to St. Mark's during this difficult time. Please pray for our task force members that we may discern the best course of action as we look to the future. And as always, pray for those who have been and will be affected by COVID-19 and other serious illnesses in any way. And that is from me and on behalf of our COVID-19 task force members. So as I said, it was not a easy or uh, simple decision, but we did have some discussion uh, talking about the situation in the hospitals right now, the idea that many of us do know folks who uh, are infected um, and are, are affected in, uh, to various degrees, uh, we felt that it was best for us to uh, not encourage any risk-taking on part of the congregation. And so again, uh, thank you for your patience. Please continue to follow us on uh, our recorded services and on these uh, Bible studies. And uh, it looks like on uh, January 27th, uh, we will have our next announcement as to worship services moving forward. Um, hopefully by that time, the situation will have improved. We'll see a significant drop in numbers, uh, maybe uh, higher numbers of folks being vaccinated. And so we will then uh, hopefully uh, soon be able to resume in-person worship. Uh, I know that uh, I miss the community as much as many of you do. Uh, but again, um, we don't want to risk uh, some serious illness uh, for the sake of being here together for worship. So uh, thank you for your patience, and thank you for following along. 
Um, today is also uh, an important day in our nation's history, um, a day that may be marked with conflict as the day goes on. Um, it is a sort of a, a hot potato kind of a situation as we look to the transition of power from uh, President uh, Donald Trump to President-elect um, Joe Biden. And uh, in light of that fact, uh, because there is so much going on in our country, uh, not only with the pandemic, with the uh, results of the election, with many changes that are happening, with much conflict that has been stirred up, um, I would like to open this Bible study with prayer, uh, and especially a prayer for peace and cooperation as we look to the future. So let us pray. Gracious God, on this day when we look forward to a future of pandemic-free, of disease-free worship, of those days when we have new leadership in our country, we pray that however we feel about that leadership, however we feel about the restrictions and rules that we have had to follow because of the pandemic, we pray, Lord, that you would move us to continue to love one another, to cooperate with one another, to recognize that no matter who leads our country, you lead our world, that no matter what diseases we face, you promise us health and long life in your loving care. Help us to remember that, to be united in our love for you and our love for one another, that our differences of opinions don't rise to the point of conflict, that we're able to disagree but still cooperate to work together, especially to remember that we are all your children, that we are all one in you, that when any part of our body hurts, the whole body hurts. So help us to love and care for one another despite our differences. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So today is Epiphany, as I said. Um, just to start with a dictionary definition of epiphany uh, from dictionary.com, as uh, you know, the uh, internet is a great place uh, to do some basic research, at least these days. Um, dictionary.com uh, defines epiphany as, uh, if it has an initial capital letter, that would be a capital E, a Christian festival observed on January 6th commemorating the manifestation of Christ to the Gentiles in the persons of the Magi, or the 12th day, um, from which we get the 12 days of Christmas. Uh, there have been traditions of uh, taking down the Christmas tree, burning the branches, having bonfires on the day of Epiphany. Uh, to celebrate uh, the bonfire representing the light of Christ, um, the taking down of the Christmas ornaments to uh, recognize the end of what we know as the Christmas season. Um, here in the church, as you know, we've celebrated the first Sunday, second Sunday, third Sunday of after Christmas. Uh, now we will be uh, celebrating the Epiphany season. So this coming Sunday with the baptism of our Lord, and then we will have the second Sunday, third Sunday after Epiphany, uh, et cetera. So it is a season season of the church year in, in our Lutheran church and in many other uh, denominations, uh, not only uh, a single day of celebration. Um, it is a day like Christmas that always falls on a designated calendar date, not calendar day. So it is always on January 6th. Occasionally, that day falls on a Sunday, and we uh, then focus our Sunday worship on Epiphany. Uh, some churches, and we always do have the option of celebrating Epiphany on a Sunday, even though, like perhaps this week, it falls on a Wednesday, uh, though we have uh, chosen to uh, celebrate as we did the past Sunday, uh, the second Sunday after Christmas, this coming Sunday, the baptism of our Lord. Uh, we talked a little bit about the visit of the wise men last week in the children's sermon, uh, if you saw that, and uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that uh, today. Some of that, uh, I'm afraid, may 
um, may shake some of our traditional understandings uh, of the so-called wise men, um, the so-called three kings. Uh, magi is probably the most accurate word to describe them. We'll talk a little bit about what that word means uh, this morning as we go along. Uh, but again, like many of our traditional understandings of Christmas, Easter, uh, other such uh, celebrations in the church, um, uh, a literal understanding, a literal, totally literal look at Scripture uh, often may not contradict our, um, our traditional understandings, but it also does not support them. And so we need to be careful um, what we see as coming from Scripture, what we see as coming from tradition. And while both can be very important, both are sometimes even essential to our understanding of our Christian faith and our Christian life, um, it is good to know uh, what is a literal uh, description from Scripture and what may be more from our uh, traditional celebrations in the Christian church. Uh, just a note for our uh, Orthodox brothers and sisters, uh, today is not Epiphany, uh, it is Christmas Eve. Uh, tomorrow, January 7th, is recognized as Christmas Day uh, in the Orthodox Church, um, and so if you have Orthodox friends, you might want to wish them a Merry Christmas tomorrow, um, and uh, remember that uh, for them the calendar is a bit different than it is for us. Um, not to say that any of us are right or wrong. Nobody, of course, knows the exact date of uh, Jesus' birth, um, but these are the times that we celebrate uh, and the times that we see as our traditional celebrations of Christmas, Epiphany, etc. Um, a couple other definitions of Epiphany uh, that show us how the church has adopted this title. Uh, perhaps why the church has adopted this title for this particular uh, celebration. Um, it is an appearance or manifestation, especially of a deity. And so we'll talk about this uh, appearance or manifestation of Jesus um, on to the Magi and how that happened and what that meant. Um, a sudden intuitive perception of or insight into the reality or essential meaning of something, usually initiated by some simple, homely, or commonplace occurrence or experience. Uh, again, uh, we see here that the wise men had this sudden intuitive perception or insight uh, into the reality of Jesus' birth. Um, as they began to follow the star, as most of you know the story, we'll read that story from the scripture here in a minute. Um, but as they followed the star, they were looking for a king. Uh, they found a baby. Uh, then they had the sudden insight, uh, the intuitive perception, um, a revelation from God, uh, an epiphany, uh, if you will, that this was the Messiah who had long been hoped for. So again, another reason why the church has chosen that title for this day. And then finally, a literary work or section of a work presenting usually symbolic such a moment of revelation and insight. And perhaps there we could relate that to the story uh, in the gospel that we'll hear this morning. Um, the, uh, the gospel from Mark, that, or I'm sorry, the gospel from Matthew that talks about the visit of the Magi as that literary work. Um, just a note from uh, our Sundays and Seasons, a note that would appear in the introduction to the bulletin if we were having worship today. Um, the Feast of Epiphany, or Manifestation, concludes the Christmas season with a celebration of God's glory revealed in the person of Jesus Christ. In Isaiah and Ephesians, the glory is proclaimed for all nations and people. Those are our first two readings uh, for Epiphany, for the day of Epiphany. Um, like the light of the star that guided the Magi to Jesus, the light of Christ reveals who we are, children of God who are claimed and washed in the waters of baptism. 
We are sent out to be beacons of the light of Christ, sharing the good news of God's love to all people. Um, going back to uh, my prayer for the situation in our, our country today, uh, the situation going on around us, uh, other places in the world, again, this is a reminder for, to us that we are sent to be beacons of the light of Christ that we are in the world but not of the world, as we hear in Scripture, uh, that we can show the world uh, that even though we may disagree, uh, even though we have differences socially or whatever, um, that we um, continue to work together in cooperation as Christian brothers and sisters. So uh, let's please keep that in mind that we are be beacons of the light of Christ. We are God's children. We are brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ. And let's be sure that we behave as such. Um, our gospel reading for Epiphany is uh, Matthew 2, verses 1 through 12. Uh, once again, as I explained earlier, uh, a few sessions ago, we are in year B of our lectionary cycle, which means most of our gospel readings will come from the gospel of Mark. Uh, however, when we do have these special festival days, these special commemorations and celebrations, um, we will hear gospel readings from other gospels uh, other than the gospel of Mark um, because they're fitting for that day and that celebration. So the story of the Magi coming from Matthew's gospel uh, is the one that we hear today for the celebration of Epiphany. Again, that's Matthew 2, verses 1 through 12. Um, an introduction, God's promise shines bright in the night as magi follow a star to honor a new king. Strangers from a faraway land, they welcome the long-awaited Messiah of Israel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the second chapter. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for you shall be for from you, excuse me, for from you shall come a ruler, who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. Uh, when they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. And so here again, we have this... Uh, story from which many of our great traditions of Christmas have come. Um, and again, to take a literal look at some of those, um, we may see them a little differently, but still uh, that does not, of course, invalidate the traditions, century-old traditions of the church. Um, the time of King Herod was sometime before uh, the year 4 BC. Uh, we're not sure exactly, again, the year that when this might have happened. Uh, King Herod reigned from 37 B.C. to 4 B.C. He had 33 years as king. Um, 
And this was, of course, following Jesus' birth. Uh, our translation calls them wise men. Um, we are, have come to know them quite affectionately as wise men, the three wise men. Um, we have come to know them as kings, as in the hymn, We Three Kings. Um, but again, to talk a little more literally about uh, who these folks were, um, I'd like to read to you from uh, Cross Marks by Brian Stoffergen, a Lutheran pastor and theologian. To understand the power of this story, the listeners must first come to understand an understanding of the Magi. Many English translations render this Greek word wise men. Uh, the NRSV has astrologers in a footnote. That is being far too kind to these visitors. That is being misleading about these worshipers. Perhaps because these visitors are from the East, are such good models of faith, we have been afraid to really present them for what they were. Originally in Persia, magi were dream interpreters. By Jesus' time, the term referred to astronomers, fortune tellers, or stargazers. In fact, our word magic or magician comes from this word magi. They were not so much respectable wise men or kings, but horoscope fanatics, a practice condemned by Jewish standards. We might compare them to people in fortune teller booths or people on the psychic hotline or other so-called occupations that foretell the future by stars, tea leaves, tarot cards, etc. And so here again, um, this may change our view of the Magi, but it doesn't have to make it a negative view of the Magi because they came as outsiders, they came as unbelievers, they came again, as is often the case in Scripture, as those who would be least expected to be the heroes of a story about Jesus, and yet they are the ones who first revealed Jesus to the non-Jewish world, especially as the Messiah, as the long-awaited Savior. And so uh, while they came to Jesus as non-believers and outsiders, they left Jesus after encountering Jesus in his in the manger. Um, after their encounter with Jesus, they left as believers, as those who uh, proclaimed Jesus as the Messiah. And so we see this profound change in the Magi uh, because of their encounter with Jesus. And of course, we can understand how that uh, happens that many of us have had a profound change in our own lives because of an encounter with Jesus. And, uh, and so uh, keep that in mind that, uh, again, it may change our image of the Magi, but it doesn't necessarily make it a negative image. Um, a little more about the Magi. Uh, one writer describes the Magi this way. The Magi would thus represent to the early Jewish reader the epitome of Gentile idolatry and religious hocus-pocus, dabblers in chicken gizzards, forever trotting off here or there in search of some key to the future. Uh, again, you know, folks who uh, today we would look down upon uh, as true believers, as true prophets, um, but yet, you know, they might we might call them tricksters, uh, hucksters, um, you know, but and yet they became the heroes of this epiphany story. Um, just a little more here about the wise men, uh, or you know the, the magi. Um, but it pretty much uh, just continues to repeat the same thing. Uh, very, um, I guess, a strong statement here that I think is important for us to keep in mind. Um, it says, the Magi should not be there. And again, this is uh, looking at a what would be a traditional Jewish telling of the story, um, what would be the understanding of the first people to hear this story. Uh, the Magi should not be there. They are heretics. They don't worship the right God. They are the wrong race, the wrong denomination, the wrong religion. 
They don't know how to worship rightly. Certainly, they give the child gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, but those are elements used in their magic. The magi should not be there. They would have been much better models of unbelief and false trust than models of faith, trust, and worship. So once again, you know, we think about some people among us. Um, you know, we have questioned whether or not some people should be in our churches. Um, we may not have questioned that publicly, but I think often privately we think, what are they doing here? Um, we know things about their past. We know things about their life. Um, and we wonder, why are they here in our church? Uh, or why are they uh, taking part in any church? Um, you know, the typical ones described as hypocrites, where we know the other side of the story about their life. Uh, and yet here, these magi uh, would have been exactly those people, and they are the ones who first recognize and reveal Jesus as the Messiah. Uh, I'm going to move along a little quickly here, uh, talking about why a star, um, and again, uh, why the magi uh, are involved in this story. Magi understood stars. Magi looked for and understood signs in the sky. A special star, or perhaps comet, made sense to them. In addition, the text tells us that they came from the east and they saw the star in the east or at its rising. The sign came to them where they were. God got their attention in a way that they understood and in the place where they were. Um, and it was often believed in those days that the uh, births and deaths of great men were marked by heavenly signs, and so uh, who better to recognize a heavenly sign uh, than these three uh, stargazers, uh, those who studied the stars as a way of predicting the future. Um, coming up on the half hour here, I, for the sake of your time and mine, uh, just to move forward a little quickly with some of the ways uh, that this story uh, has shaped our tradition uh, in ways that uh, are not, again, not contradicted by the Bible, but not supported by uh, a literal understanding of the Scripture. Uh, first of all is the idea that there are three wise men, three kings. We don't know how many wise men there were. Um, there may have been two. We know there were more than one because we have the plural magi, um, but we, we don't know if there were two or there were 20. Uh, all we know is that they brought three gifts, and so, um, you know, we have come to assume that there were three magi because there are three gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Um, there are traditional stories surrounding the Magi as far as their names. Um, and uh, their names have traditionally been Caspar, Melchior, and Baltazar are three of the traditional names, three of the most common names attributed to uh, the Magi. And again, we don't necessarily know that that was their names. We don't have biblical support for that, uh, but they are um, traditional names. And there is a uh, traditional house blessing or blessing for a home at Epiphany. And so I'd like to uh, just fill you in a little bit on that. Um, if you have come into St. Mark's uh, through the main entrance, uh, entered the narthex, or entered the sanctuary from the narthex. You may have seen uh, written in chalk above the doors um, a number 20, uh, a plus sign, the letter CMB, and another number 20. Um, I'll explain to you what that means and why the next time you come in, uh, that second number will change. Um, says the, the season of Epiphany offers an occasion for gathering with friends and family members for a blessing of the home. Uh, this year, of course, that blessing will have to be um, 
virtual or digital. Um, it may be, and again, I don't like that word virtual because it makes it seem as if it's not real. Uh, but we do gather as we are here um, in one way or another. It is a real gathering, but it is not an in-person gathering. Um, following an Eastern European tradition, a visual blessing may be inscribed with white chalk above the main door. For example, 20 plus CMB plus, this year it will be 21. Um, the numbers change with each new year. The three letters stand for either the ancient Latin blessing, Christe Mansionum Benedica. Not really a student of Latin. I hope I didn't do that uh, too much damage. Christe Mansionum Benedica, or Benedica, which means Christ bless this house. Or the legendary name of the Magi, Caspar, Melchior, and Balthazar. And so in the tradition of that, Epiphany blessing on our house of worship. Um, when we return, the inscription above the door will be 20 plus CMB plus, or not plus, the cross sign uh, to represent uh, Christ blessing this house. Uh, it's not a plus sign, it is a sign of the cross. Um, it'll be 2000 and uh, 21 years ago. And then Christ bless this house and remain with us throughout the new year uh, will be the blessing uh, for our house of worship. So that is uh, quite a bit of uh, ground covered this morning. Uh, again, uh, to uh, assure our COVID task force, we have um, asked that no one be in the church here without a mask. Um, I am in the parlor. I have the doors closed. Um, it will be cleaned in here after I'm done, and we don't expect anyone to be here uh, for some time. So uh, if, you know, there are questions as to, well, why is Pastor Jim not wearing a mask? Uh, I feel that it is safe for me to do so for the sake of this Bible study. Uh, hopefully we will be together soon. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, please please, please do not hesitate to get in touch with me by email, uh, revjperson at gmail.com. Uh, you can reply to any Facebook posts that you may, where you may see this, uh, this video posted. Um, call the church office, 717-652-6700. Uh, my extension is number two. Extension one will take you to the church office. Um, again, we regret the fact that we are not able to be together, but we feel it is for the best of all of us uh, and for those who have to care for uh, those of us who may get sick as a result of coming together. Um, we know how overwhelmed hospitals and healthcare workers are these days, and we don't want to add to the burden that they are carrying and caring for uh, the sick. So. With that said, again, please keep everyone in this situation in your prayers, and we will close with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. And you will see me Sunday. Uh, I hopefully will see you soon. Peace be with you all.